Well, this is World Communion Sunday. And I think it's especially important in, an, in the era in which we live to have those experiences which draw us together. For truly, there is so much in the world right now that is driving people apart. I think we all know here in our own country, there is more estrangement of one person from another because of opinions and attitudes and, and associations. My son lives in San Francisco, three blocks from the headquarters of Twitter. Probably little else has done more to alienate people in the era in which we live than statements written in 140 characters on Twitter. But it's not just here. As you know, people are pulling away from one another in actions taken all over the world. There was the the Brexit vote in the United Kingdom. There was the vote recently by the Kurds to separate from the nation of Iraq. Even now, literally, as we are gathered together, there is this, it's hard to know from this morning's headlines, what is happening in the, the, the province, the district of Catalonia in, in Spain. Uh, they were scheduled to have a, a referendum on whether or not they wanted to separate. And as you may have heard from the news, there was, uh, uh, there was a, a, a involvement of the, the army and the police to prevent people from voting. Nobody's really sure where that stands even today. And right here in our own state, there is more serious talk about the state of California seceding from the United States, the possibility that that could actually be on our ballot in an election coming up soon. I mean, think of that. People haven't considered something like that in our country for over 150 years, but it may be before us within the next few years. People seem to be separating more than many of us recall in our lifetimes. And yet maybe it is, it is not so unique to this period. There, there have been times in history when people have, have drawn back into, um, into more engaged and intense relationships with people who are like them and away from those who are different. And then there have been times in history where people have, have drawn together, have come together with, with people of, of differences. I think of after World War II, the founding of the United Nations and other actions where, where nations banded together for the, the hope that a great cataclysmic war would never again engulf the world. So this may be part of a, part of a cycle that's, that's taking place in our lives right now. But it reminds us, I believe, of the importance of these experiences where we can, in fact, come together with people who are different from us, who live differently, who worship differently, but yet worship the same God, who are part of the universal church of Jesus Christ. Our, our scripture reading talks about that, that unity, the beginning of, of chapter 2 here. If there is any encouragement in Christ, any consolation from love, any sharing in the Spirit, make my joy complete. Be of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility regard others as better than yourselves. 
that is a hallmark of the, the life of servanthood and faithfulness that we, we lift others up to God before we regard ourselves and our own needs. But in this era in, in which we live, in this day and age, it appears that it's becoming more difficult for that to happen. So what an important reminder we have in this passage that we as, as people of God are to be those who are drawn together, those who, who have of the same mind, even if, even if different perceptions, different opinions about some things, who are still united in the presence of Jesus Christ our Lord. And so, so the, 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 the celebration of world communion comes, I believe, at, at just a time when not just we here in this country, but Christians around the world need it so very, very much. We need to be drawn together. We need to be reminded that we are one in a common humanity and that we are one in Christ Jesus our Lord. Some of you know how uh, World Communion Sunday got started, but if you hadn't heard that story, it really was started by Presbyterians. It was started in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania in 1933. At, uh, through the efforts of a congregation called the Shady Side Presbyterian Church. Apparently, there was a hill there in Pittsburgh, and on the south side of the hill, they got most of the sun. On the north side of the hill, uh, they got mostly shade, and the neighborhood on the north side of the hill came to be called Shady Side for the obvious reason. That was the shady side of the hill, and um, Presbyterians in the late... Uh, 1800s built this uh, great edifice. It's still a strong church today. But in 1933, you remember, that was a time, that was a difficult time also. It was the depths of the Great Depression in 1933. And the elders and, and the pastor of the Shadyside Presbyterian Church concluded that one thing that was was needed very much at that time in people's lives, and not just people in Pittsburgh or people in the United States, but people around the world, was an opportunity to do something to celebrate their faith in Jesus Christ together. And so came the, the idea for a worldwide celebration of Christ, which I understand gathered momentum gradually, but then really took off and is now celebrated on this day at this time, at this hour, not because it's the same time everywhere. It's not 10, you know, 10.30 in the morning everywhere, but, but the Christians are worshiping every, around the clock all over the world and receiving the elements of the Lord's Supper at the same time. So today we, we celebrate this, this sacrament. And it, it, remind, it can remind us also of the fact that we are in a, a time and a situation which, while it might seem unusual as we look out upon our country and the world, has happened many times before. In fact, there are some historians who would tell us that the time, the era in which Jesus lived, was crucified and, and rose from the dead, was in fact such a period of time of, of people who were having the tendency to pull away from each other and be estranged from one another and that it was the perfect moment for God to send the Son into the world. And so, today, as we worship together, 
And as we prepare to, to celebrate the Lord's Supper, we're reminded once again of, of God drawing us together here, but drawing us together with Christians the world over. And so, as we remember that, we invite all to this table, the table of the Lord who, who believe that Jesus Christ is their Savior, and we invite those who do so to celebrate this sacrament which reminds us of the sacrifice of Christ on the cross, his broken body, his shed blood, for the remission of sins and for the reconciliation of the world. Let's join together in our litany. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. 